This video is part of our Qt C++ GUI development intermediate course. It is this chapter here on deployment and we will be deploying the application we build in the course on Windows, Mac and Linux. The link to the course is shared in the description below. You can also check out the other courses we have on Qt. You can learn about Qt Quick and Qt Widgets. In this chapter, we're going to talk about how you can deploy your Qt applications. And by deployment, we mean the steps you have to follow to ship your application so that it can be used by end users. And mostly your users will want one file that they can click on to open your application. And they don't want to go through many steps to fetch all kinds of crazy files. They want one thing they can double click or click on and they should be able to use your application. So we're going to see how you can do that. Okay, so up until now, we have only been running debug versions of the applications that we have built. If you look here, this is the last version of Painter app that we have uh, opened here in Qt Creator. And if you go down here, you're going to see that it's a debug version. But if you click on this button, you're going to see that it is possible to choose profile and release here. And uh, if you want to ship your application to end users, you should ship the release version. The difference between these two guys is that the debug version contains information about the code you write to make it really easy to debug if you run into problems. But you don't want to ship that information to the user because it's useless. The user is just interested in running your application. That's why you have to give them the release version of your application. Okay, so to ship the application, we're going to build in release mode, and that's going to give us a release binary that we can send to our users. Okay, once you have the binary, you have to do different things based on where you want to deploy your application. If you want to deploy on Linux, you're going to do different things. If you want to deploy a Mac, you're going to do different things. And the same is going to apply to Windows, Android, iOS, and Embedded, and anywhere where you can run Qt applications. In this course, we're going to be focusing on Linux, Mac, and Windows, the main leading desktop platforms. We're not going to talk about mobile platforms or Embedded, because for those, it is really preferable to write your user interfaces in Qt Quick. So we're going to kind of ignore those in this course because we are learning about C++ GUI development, which is really more relevant to desktop platforms. Okay, depending on the platform we are deploying our application on, we're going to do different things, but the concepts are really going to be the same. The first thing we have to do once we have our binary generated from Qt Creator is to add in the dependencies so that the user can run the application without running into problems. And uh, there are two ways we can load in our dependencies. We can do that manually, or we can use some tools that are provided by the Qt framework. On Windows, we can use WinDeployQt to load our dependencies. On a Mac, we can use MacDeployQt to load our dependencies for our binary. And uh, there is another tool which is called Linux Deploy Qt, which you can use to add the dependencies to your binary, and it's going to work pretty well. But this Linux Deploy Qt tool is not official, it's not supported by the Qt company, the company behind Qt. So it is kind of an open source thing, but uh, that doesn't mean that it doesn't work well. It works pretty well. And we're going to have a chance to play with it in this chapter here. Okay, so once you have your binary generated, you're going to need to add in the dependencies. You can do that manually or use one of these tools depending on where you are deploying your application. And uh, here is an example of what we are going to do to put our dependencies together. We will have our binary. You can see this painter app icon here. This is our binary generated from Qt Creator. But we're going to add in all these files that are necessary for this binary to run. We can add in those manually. And uh, we're going to have a chance to see how you do that, both on Windows and Linux. And we're going to have a chance to see how you do that 
or you can use one of these tools to put in these dependencies you see here. Okay, in this image, my Painter app application was generated for Windows. And if you don't do this manually on Windows, we will have to use WinDeploy QT. And we're going to have a chance to see how this works. The image you see here is for Windows. And uh, to put all these dependencies together, I have used WinDeploy QT. And we're going to have a chance to see how this works exactly. And uh, we're going to have a chance to see how this works in detail. Okay, once you have all your dependencies in one place, in one folder to be exact, you see we have the Painter app folder here. We need a way, especially for Windows, to turn this folder into one file that we can ship to the user. That's where packaging comes in. We need to take the folder containing the files needed for our application to run and turn them into one file that we can send to the user. This is what we mean by packaging. And again, depending on the platform where you're going to run your application, you're going to do your packaging a bit differently. For Windows, we will need to create an installer file that your user can double click on and start the install process. And if you have ever used a Windows computer, you know this. For Linux, we will have many options. We can also use an installer, but we have the option to use something like a NAP bundle, which is one file that you click on to open your application. There is a technology called App Image that makes this pretty easy, and we're going to have a chance to play with this. On Linux, you can also package your application to be used from package managers. You can go through things like APT on Debian, Ubuntu, or YAM on Fedora, and your application can be used through these means. But we're not going to go down this path in this course because this is considered still difficult for many users. What I really like is the app image option, which is going to give us one file that our user can double click on and the application is going to run. But you can also use installers on Linux if you want that. On Mac, you can do the same things you really do on Linux. After all, Mac is based on Unix. So you can use installers. You can uh, use what we call app bundles on the Mac. And I also think you can go through package managers to install whatever you need on your Mac. Okay, I have to say this, I am not a Mac user. I don't use Apple devices. So the best I can do here is show you the steps you can go through to generate an installer file for the Mac and I show you the steps you can follow to generate a NAP bundle that you can run on your Mac device that you can send to your Mac users. And uh, it's going to be pretty much the same thing we do on Linux. So you can look at the videos for Linux and you're going to understand what you can do on your Mac. And as always, if you run into any problem, do ask and uh, we will do the best we can to help you out. Okay, now that you understand what packaging is and uh, the options we have on different desktop platforms, I would like to introduce a tool that Qt provides for your packaging needs. And uh, this is the Qt Installer Framework. This is basically a tool that is cross-platform. It works well on Windows, Mac, and Linux, and it's going to allow us to create installers for our application. And we're going to see how this works in details, both on Windows and Linux. On Windows, your installer is going to look something like this. Okay, so when we use the Qt installer framework on Windows, we're going to get an installer like this. And if we send this to our users, they're going to be able to double click on this and install the application and run it. On Linux, if you want, you can also generate an installer. But as we said, there is a technology called App Image that is going to give you one file that your users can double click on to directly open your application. And I personally think you don't even need to create installers for Linux because app images work pretty well. You can send these files to your users and they can directly open it and use your application. No more steps needed and this is pretty cool. Okay, so now that we have a basic understanding of what deployment is and uh, the options that we have available to us, we're going to try this out and show you how this works in real life. 
We are going to break this in steps. We're going to start by looking at how you can deploy your application on Windows. We are basically going to deploy Painter app, the painting application we have been building so far. And we're going to make it possible to send one installer file to our users so that they can double click and start installing it and use it however they want. We are also going to see how you can deploy your application on Linux. By the end, we're going to have an app image that we can send to our users, one file that they can double click on and open and use the application. And we are going to finish by showing you how you can do the same on a Mac. As I said before, I am no Mac user, so I am just going to show you the steps you can follow to do the same things we've done for Linux and port them on the Mac so that you can follow that if you are running on a Mac or if you want to deploy your application for Mac users. Okay, this is all for the overview on deployment using Qt. We're going to stop here in this lecture and in the next one we're going to start and see how you can deploy your applications on Windows. Go ahead and finish up here and meet me there.